Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast episode. We're thrilled to have you with us as we explore a story full of emotions, lessons, and inspiration. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. If you enjoy this story, please leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Your feedback helps us improve and create even better content for you. Now sit back, relax, and let's dive into today's story. Nick was a man of habits, his life built on the steady rhythm of routine and responsibility. At 42, he found comfort in the predictable cadence of his days. Each morning began the same way, a steaming mug of black coffee in his favorite chipped ceramic mug, the faint aroma mingling with the smell of freshly baked toast Jessica would prepare. There are three children, Madison, 18, who had recently left for college, Jamie, 15, and Lucas, 10, brought noise and life into the house, filling it with the occasional chaos of forgotten homework and misplaced shoes. Nick often reflected on his marriage with Jessica, his partner of nearly two decades. Theirs was a love that had weathered storms, financial struggles in the early years, the exhaustion of raising young children, and the inevitable disagreements that came with blending two lives so completely. Yet, beneath the surface, there was a quiet distance, like a faint crack in a glass window. They still exchanged smiles, shared jokes over dinner, and kissed goodbye each morning. But the spark that had once defined their relationship seemed dimmed, replaced by the comfortable, if uninspired, routine of long-term commitment. Jessica had recently started volunteering at the local hospital, a decision spurred by Madison's departure for college. Nick admired her dedication, though he couldn't help but notice her newfound energy and the hours she spent away from home. The hospital work gave her purpose, she said, a sense of fulfillment she hadn't felt in years. Nick supported her decision wholeheartedly, brushing aside any inkling of doubt as unwarranted paranoia. Life was ordinary, marked by moments of fleeting joy and small annoyances. Nick cherished his weekend fishing trips with his childhood friends Adam, Greg, and Tim, those trips were sacred, a brief escape into nature where the conversation flowed easily, untouched by the complexities of everyday life. The lapping of the lake's water, the hum of cicadas, and the occasional tug of a fish on the line offered a kind of serenity Nick rarely found elsewhere. It was during one such fishing trip that Tim shattered Nick's illusion of normalcy. Nick, I don't know how to say this, Tim began hesitantly, his voice low as they cast their lines into the still water. But I saw Jessica's car at the Golden Crest Hotel. Twice. <laughs> Nick froze, his grip on the fishing rod tightening. What are you talking about, Tim? When was this? About three weeks ago, and then just a few days ago. Tim said, his tone uneasy. I thought maybe she was meeting someone for her volunteer work, but... Twice in a month? At a hotel? The words hung in the air, heavy and unshakable. Nick laughed nervously, shaking his head. Y you must be mistaken. Jessica wouldn't... She's volunteering, Tim. That's all. Tim's silence spoke volumes. That night, Nick found himself staring at the ceiling long after Jessica had fallen asleep beside him. Her breathing was soft and even but his mind was anything but. Could Tim have been mistaken? Nick replayed Jessica's recent behavior in his mind, searching for signs he had overlooked. She had been working late more often, brushing off his questions with a smile and a quick kiss. It's just the hospital, she would say, her voice light. There's so much to do. The next morning, Nick kissed Jessica goodbye as she left for her volunteer shift, her scent lingering faintly in the air. He sat at the kitchen table long after she had gone, the coffee in his mug growing cold. A gnawing sense of unease began to take root. Nick decided to act. He told himself it was probably nothing, just a way to ease his mind. With trembling hands, he installed a GPS tracker and an audio recorder in Jessica's car. The act felt wrong, like a betrayal of the trust that had been the foundation of their marriage. Yet, the seed of doubt had been planted, and Nick couldn't ignore it. 
Days turned into weeks as Nick monitored Jessica's movements. Her visits to the Golden Crest Hotel were infrequent but undeniable. Each time, she would spend a few hours there before returning home, her demeanor unchanged. It wasn't until one Thursday evening when Nick decided to see for himself that the pieces began to fall into place. Parked discreetly across the street, Nick watched as Jessica emerged from the hotel, her hair slightly tousled, her face radiant in a way he hadn't seen in years. Moments later, David Carter, a mutual friend from their social circle, exited the hotel, his hand brushing against hers before they parted ways. Nick left to wait for David in the car, decision still ringing in his head about what it meant. When Jessica called him that evening, her voice was cheerful, unassuming. Hey Nick, what do you want for dinner? Whatever you feel like making, he replied, forcing an even tone. I trust your judgment. The call ended, but Nick remained rooted in his chair, the image of Jessica and David replaying in his mind like a broken record. Determined to confirm his suspicions, Nick sought help from Anna, a receptionist at the hotel who had always been kind to him during previous family vacations. Over coffee, he explained his situation, omitting the more incriminating details. Anna hesitated, her loyalty to the hotel's privacy policy wavering under the weight of Nick's desperation. Thursdays like clockwork. Nick stared at the paper, his hands trembling. The dates matched perfectly. Jessica's betrayal was no longer just a suspicion. It was a reality he couldn't ignore. As the days passed, Nick's world seemed to blur, the once in vivid colors of his life fading into muted tones. He found himself withdrawing from his children, from his friends, even from himself. Yet, amid the anguish, a new resolve began to form. He would uncover the truth, not just for himself, but for the family that had once been his everything. The first cracks in Nick's carefully constructed life had appeared. How deep they would run and what they would reveal remained to be seen. Nick's mind was a storm, an unrelenting cyclone of thoughts that churned and twisted, refusing to settle. The revelation from Tim, like a single match, had ignited a blaze that now consumed every corner of his being. Doubt, poisonous and insidious, had seeped into his soul, tainting even the simplest of moments. The laughter of his children at the dinner table rang hollow, their innocent chatter a cruel contrast to the torment building within him. Jessica's smile, once a beacon of comfort, now seemed veiled, hiding secrets he was desperate to uncover. One late afternoon, as the golden light of the setting sun bathed the neighborhood in a deceptive calm, Nick sat on the edge of his bed, gripping his phone tightly. He stared at the GPS app, the blinking dot marking Jessica's car as it idled at the Golden Crest Hotel once more. The familiar location felt like a dagger, twisting deeper into his chest. The hotel wasn't far, a mere 15 minutes away. He could go there, see for himself, and this agony of uncertainty. But fear held him back, a paralyzing force that whispered cruel possibilities into his ear. What if you're wrong? What if you're right? The questions clawed at his sanity, their answers promising equal measures of devastation. That evening, Jessica came home later than usual, her face flushed with an unusual vibrancy. She moved around the kitchen with a lightness that felt foreign, humming a tune Nick couldn't place. He watched her from the doorway, his gaze heavy with unspoken accusations. You're late, he said, his voice sharper than intended. Jessica glanced at him, a flicker of surprise crossing her features before she smiled. Sorry, things ran over at the hospital. We had a meeting about expanding volunteer programs. Her words were effortless, smooth, like the practiced lines of a seasoned actress. Nick nodded, forcing a tight-lipped smile. Sounds important. It is, she replied, turning back to the stove. 
The conversation ended there, but the silence that followed was deafening. Nick felt like a man standing at the edge of a cliff, the ground crumbling beneath him, threatening to pull him into an abyss he couldn't escape. In the days that followed, Nick's suspicion began to consume him. He became hyper-aware of Jessica's every move, scrutinizing her phone calls, her casual texts, the way she lingered a moment too long in front of the mirror before leaving the house. His heart, once steadfast and trusting, now beat with the erratic rhythm of betrayal. The audio recorder hidden in Jessica's car became his lifeline to the truth. Each evening, after she had fallen asleep, he would retrieve it, listening intently to the mundane chatter of the radio, the occasional honk of a car horn, and the faint murmur of her voice. It was during one such session, in the stillness of the night, that he first heard David's name. Jessica's voice was light, teasing. David, you always know how to make me laugh. Nick froze, the blood in his veins turning to ice. He rewound the recording, his trembling fingers fumbling with the buttons. Again, her words came through, clear and undeniable. David, the name reverberated in his mind like a tolling bell, each repetition a blow to his already fragile heart. Who was David to her? A friend? A confidant? Or something more? Nick's thoughts spiraled, each possibility darker than the last. He recalled the man from their occasional gatherings. Charming, quick-witted, always the center of attention, but surely David wouldn't, couldn't. The next Thursday, Nick found himself parked outside the Golden Crest Hotel, his hands gripping the steering wheel so tightly that his knuckles turned white. He felt like an intruder in his own life, a man peering through a window into a world he didn't recognize. As the minutes dragged on, his resolve faltered, doubt and anger battling for dominance in his mind. Then he saw her. Jessica emerged from the hotel, her expression serene, her movements unhurried. She was followed moments later by David, his hand brushing lightly against her back in a gesture that spoke volumes. Nick's world tilted on its axis, the carefully constructed facade of his life shattering in an instant. He didn't confront her that night. Instead, he returned home, his emotions churning like a storm-tossed sea. Anger clawed at him, hot and consuming, but beneath it lay a profound sadness, a mourning for the life he thought he had. Jessica's betrayal was no longer just a suspicion. It was a reality cold and unforgiving. Nick sat in the darkness of their living room, the glow of his phone illuminating the evidence he had gathered. The GPS logs, the audio recordings, the photographs he had taken. Each piece was a puzzle, and together they painted a picture he wished he could unsee. The following morning, Nick made a decision. He wouldn't act impulsively, wouldn't let his emotions dictate his next steps, if Jessica had betrayed him, he needed proof, undeniable, irrefutable evidence that would leave no room for excuses or manipulation. He reached out to Anna, the hotel receptionist, who had always been warm and accommodating during their family vacations. Over coffee, he explained his situation, his voice steady but laced with desperation. Anna hesitated, her loyalty to the hotel conflicting with her empathy for Nick's plight. Eventually, she relented, providing him with David's stay history. Thursdays, like clockwork, Nick stared at the printout, his hands trembling. The dates matched perfectly with Jessica's absences. There was no denying it now. The betrayal was complete, a wound that cut deeper than he ever thought possible. As Nick drove home, the weight of the truth pressed heavily on his chest. He felt like a man adrift, his once solid foundation eroded by the tides of deceit. Yet, amid the despair, a flicker of resolve began to burn. He wouldn't let this break him, not completely. He would confront Jessica, not as a broken man, but as someone who deserved answers, 
who deserved better. The first cracks in their marriage had been subtle, almost imperceptible. Now, they were gaping chasms, threatening to swallow everything they had built together. Nick knew that his journey was far from over. The truth had been uncovered, but the battle for his future, for his family, his dignity, his sense of self, was just beginning. As he pulled into the driveway, the house stood before him, deceptively quiet and unassuming. It was a place that had once been a sanctuary, a symbol of their shared dreams. Now, it felt like a battleground, each room a reminder of the life they had built and the secrets that had torn it apart. Nick sat in the car for a moment longer, his gaze fixed on the warm glow of the porch light. He took a deep breath, steadying himself for what lay ahead. The storm within him had not subsided, but he was ready to face it, to navigate its chaos and find his way to the other side. For better or worse, the path forward was clear, and Nick, though battered and bruised, was determined to walk it. Nick's days turned into an intricate web of investigation and preparation, each action measured, each decision calculated. Gone was the man who once found solace in the mundane. In his place was someone driven by purpose, albeit one laced with pain. His trust, once the bedrock of his relationship, had crumbled, leaving behind a jagged landscape he navigated with equal parts determination and despair. The morning after his conversation with Anna, Nick found himself sitting in his truck in the parking lot of a nearby electronic store. His jaw clenched as he stared at the plain storefront, his mind racing with thoughts of what lay ahead. He knew what he needed, a better audio recorder, a small camera, and a phone app to track movements more precisely. It was a grim checklist, the kind a private investigator might compile, not a husband trying to save what was left of his marriage. The store clerk barely glanced at Nick as he gathered the equipment, his voice monotone as he described the features of each device. Nick nodded absently, his focus elsewhere. The clerk's words faded into the background, replaced by the relentless thrum of Nick's thoughts. Back home, Nick sat at the kitchen table. The equipment spread out before him like tools for a surgery he was ill-prepared to perform. He fiddled with the recorder, testing its clarity, ensuring it could pick up even the faintest of whispers. The camera, a tiny device that could be clipped discreetly inside a car or a bag, felt cold and foreign in his hands. Each piece of technology represented a step further into the abyss, a journey into the secrets that Jessica had hidden from him. He installed the camera in Jessica's car, the act itself feeling like a betrayal. As he worked, his hands trembled, his breath shallow. He told himself it was necessary, that the truth, no matter how painful, was better than living in the shadows of doubt. The camera's lens glinted in the sunlight, a silent witness to whatever revelations lay ahead. The next few days passed in a haze of surveillance and sleepless nights. Nick reviewed the footage obsessively, poring over every detail, every interaction. The camera revealed what his heart had already suspected. Jessica was meeting David regularly. Their interactions cloaked in an intimacy that Nick couldn't ignore. One clip stood out, seared into Nick's memory like a brand. Jessica sat in her car, her face lit by the soft glow of her phone. Her lips curved into a smile, her fingers brushing her hair back as she spoke into the device. David, you're impossible, she said, her tone light, almost flirtatious. All right, I'll see you Thursday. Nick paused the video, his chest tightening. Thursday, the same day David always stayed at the Golden Crest Hotel. He slammed the laptop shut, the sudden motion startling the quiet of the room. The air felt suffocating, heavy with the weight of betrayal. Nick leaned back in his chair, his hands covering his face. Anger bubbled beneath the surface, but it was the ache of heartbreak that overwhelmed him, a dull, relentless pain that refused to be silenced. 
Determined to confront the truth head-on, Nick decided to gather more irrefutable evidence. He reached out to a contact he hadn't spoken to in years, Brian, a retired private investigator who owed Nick a favor. The two met at a diner on the outskirts of town, the hum of conversations and clinking silverware providing a backdrop to their tense exchange. Brian listened intently as Nick explained the situation, his expression unreadable. When Nick finished, Brian leaned back, folding his arms across his chest. You're sure you want to go through with this? Brian asked, his tone cautious. Once you open this door, there's no closing it. Nick nodded, his jaw set. I need the truth, Brian. All of it. Brian sighed, pulling out a notepad. All right, let's get to work. Over the next week, Brian became an essential part of Nick's operation. He obtained phone records, tracked David's schedule, and even managed to access security footage from the Golden Crest Hotel. Each piece of information brought Nick closer to the truth, the puzzle slowly coming together in a picture that was both devastating and undeniable. One evening, Brian handed Nick a manila folder, its contents meticulously organized. This is everything I could find, Brian said, his voice somber. Phone logs, hotel records, even a timeline of their meetings. Nick opened the folder, his hand steady despite the storm raging inside him. The evidence was overwhelming. Text messages between Jessica and David, filled with inside jokes and plans to meet. Hotel receipts with both their names, and a series of photos capturing their clandestine rendezvous. Nick stared at the photographs, his heart pounding. One image stood out. A candid shot of Jessica and David laughing together in the hotel parking lot. Her hand rested lightly on his arm, her expression one of unguarded happiness. It was a look Nick hadn't seen on her face in years. The room seemed to close in around him, the air thick with emotion. He felt anger, yes, but also an overwhelming sense of loss. The woman in the photograph was a stranger, a version of Jessica he no longer recognized. As the days turned into weeks, Nick's preparations took on a sharper focus. He began documenting everything meticulously, knowing that he would need undeniable proof when the time came to confront Jessica. He started drafting a letter to her, a carefully worded account of his discoveries, interspersed with questions he wasn't sure he wanted answers to. One evening, as he sat at his desk, pen in hand, he found himself reflecting on their early years together. Memories flooded his mind. Their first apartment, the way they had laughed over burnt dinners and shared dreams about the future. Those moments felt distant now, like echoes from a life that no longer belonged to him. Nick's determination hardened. This wasn't just about Jessica's betrayal. It was about reclaiming his own sense of worth, about finding a path forward through the wreckage. He knew the confrontation would be painful, but he also knew it was necessary. The final piece of his plan fell into place when Anna, the hotel receptionist, agreed to print out one more crucial document, a record of David's most recent stay, complete with timestamps that aligned perfectly with Jessica's visits. With the evidence in hand, Nick felt a strange sense of calm, as though the storm inside him had finally settled. On a quiet Wednesday evening, Nick sat in his car outside the hotel, watching as Jessica and David exited the building together. They didn't see him. Their laughter and easy camaraderie filled the air as they walked to their cars. Nick gripped the steering wheel, his knuckles white, but he didn't move. This wasn't the moment for confrontation. Not yet. Instead, he took a deep breath and started his car, driving away with a newfound resolve. The evidence was undeniable, and the time for action was near. For now, he would go home, kiss his children goodnight, and prepare for the storm that was about to break. Nick's journey had reached a turning point. The truth he had uncovered was both a weapon and a wound, and he would wield it carefully. The confrontation was coming, and with it, the reckoning that would change everything. 
The day of reckoning arrived like a storm, slowly at first, with ominous clouds gathering on the horizon, until it suddenly erupted, impossible to ignore or escape. Nick stood in the dim light of the living room, the manila folder clutched in his hands. Each piece of evidence inside was a shard of his broken trust, sharp and cutting, yet necessary for the confrontation ahead. The air in the house was thick, sharpicating, as if it too anticipated the explosion to come. Jessica's car pulled into the driveway, her familiar silhouette illuminated briefly by the headlights. Nick's heart pounded, a relentless drumbeat of anger and heartbreak. He had replayed this moment in his mind countless times, rehearsing what he would say, how he would stay composed, but now that it was here, the reality of it was overwhelming. If you found this video helpful, please share it with your friends and family so they can enjoy this useful knowledge too. She walked through the door, her expression soft with exhaustion. Hey, she greeted, dropping her purse on the table. Dinner smells great. Did you cook? Nick didn't answer. Instead, he stepped into the light, his face carved with emotions he could no longer suppress. Jessica, we need to talk. His tone stopped her midstep. She looked at him, her brow furrowing. What's wrong? She asked, her voice tinged with cautious concern. Sit down, Nick said, his words firm, but not loud. They carried the weight of something final, something unchangeable. Jessica hesitated, her gaze flickering to the folder in his hand, then back to his face. Slowly, she sank into the armchair across from him. Nick took a deep breath, steadying himself. The room felt like a courtroom, with him as both the accuser and the executioner. I know, he said simply, his voice trembling despite his best efforts. About you and David. Jessica froze. For a moment she didn't speak, her expression a mask of confusion and denial. What are you talking about? She said, her tone defensive. David? He's just a friend. Nick's laugh was bitter, hollow, a sound that carried none of the warmth it once had. He dropped the folder onto the coffee table, the paper spilling out like damning evidence in a trial. Don't, he said, his voice sharper now. Don't insult me by pretending. Jessica's eyes darted to the photos, the hotel receipts, the printed text messages. The color drained from her face as the reality of the situation set in. Nick, I can explain, she began, her voice shaking. It's not what it looks like. Nick leaned forward, his hands gripping the edge of the table. Then tell me, Jessica. What is it? Because to me, it looks like the woman I've loved for 20 years. The mother of my children has been lying to my face. It looks like betrayal. His words hit her like a slap, and for a moment she looked as though she might cry. But then, something shifted in her expression. A flicker of defiance. You don't understand, she said, her tone harder now. Things haven't been the same between us, Nick. You're always distant, always working or off with your friends. I, I didn't plan for this to happen. Nick's laugh came again, sharper this time, like the edge of a blade. So, it's my fault? You're saying I pushed you into David's arms? I'm saying it's not that simple, Jessica shot back, her voice rising. Do you think I wanted this? Do you think I wanted to feel invisible in my own marriage? The room was electric with tension, every word a spark that threatened to ignite an uncontrollable fire. Nick stood, his hands trembling with rage. Invisible, he repeated, his voice breaking. I've been here, Jessica. Every day, I've been here, doing everything I can for this family. And you? What? You run to a hotel to feel seen? By him? Jessica stood too, her face flushed with a mix of anger and shame. You don't get it, Nick. You never tried to see things from my side. Nick stepped closer, his voice dropping to a dangerous calm. 
And what side is that, Jessica? The side where lying and sneaking around is somehow justified? The side where you throw away 20 years for, for this? Her silence was deafening, a void that filled the room with unspoken truths. For the first time, Jessica looked at him with something other than defiance. There was regret in her eyes now, but it was too little, too late. As the confrontation unfolded, their children, Jamie and Lucas, emerged from their rooms, their faces pale with confusion. What's going on? Jamie asked, her voice small. Nick turned to her, his heart breaking anew. Go back to your room, sweetheart. This is between your mom and me. But, Jamie started, but Jessica cut her off. Please, Jamie, just go, Jessica said, her voice cracking. Reluctantly, the children retreated, their presence a painful reminder of what was truly at stake. Nick's anger faltered for a moment, replaced by a crushing sense of failure. He had wanted to shield them from this, to protect the family they had built, but now that dream lay in ruins. I can't do this anymore, Nick said finally, his voice heavy with exhaustion. I can't keep pretending everything is okay. You made your choices, Jessica. Now I'm making mine. What does that mean? She asked, her voice trembling. It means we're done, Nick said, his words like a gavel striking the final blow. I want a divorce. Jessica's breath hitched, her composure crumbling. Nick, please, don't do this. I made a mistake, but we can fix this. For the kids, we can try. Nick shook his head, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. You didn't just make a mistake, Jessica. You made a choice. Over and over again. And now, we have to live with the consequences. As the confrontation reached its climax, the sound of a car pulling into the driveway broke the tension. Nick turned toward the window, his jaw tightening as he saw Rachel step out. She walked to the door with a determined stride, holding her own folder of evidence. Jessica's eyes widened in alarm. What is she doing here? Nick didn't answer. The doorbell rang and he opened it to let Rachel in. She met Jessica's gaze, her expression cold and unyielding. David isn't coming tonight, Rachel said, her voice sharp. He's too busy packing his things. Jessica looked between them, realization dawning. You've been working together, she said, her tone accusing. Yes, Nick replied simply, because the two of you made this our problem. The final confrontation was swift and merciless. Rachel presented her own evidence, laying bare the extent of David's betrayal. Jessica's protests grew quieter, her defenses crumbling under the weight of the truth. By the end, there was nothing left to say. Nick stood by the door, Watching as Jessica packed her belongings, each item she placed in the suitcase felt like a piece of their life being dismantled. When she finally left, the house was eerily quiet, the storm having passed but leaving devastation in its wake. Rachel turned to Nick, her expression softening. Are you okay? Nick exhaled, the weight of the confrontation settling on his shoulders. No, he admitted, but I will be. For the first time in weeks, Nick felt a flicker of hope. It was small, fragile, but it was there. A reminder that even in the darkest moments, there was a chance for something new to grow. The battle was over, but the journey was just beginning. The morning after Jessica's departure was strangely quiet, the kind of silence that felt heavy, lingering in every corner of the house. Nick sat at the kitchen table, staring at his coffee as the steam curled and dissipated. The familiar mug in his hand, a gift from Jessica on their 10th anniversary, felt colder than the coffee inside. It was a small thing, but like so many objects in the house, it was steeped in memories he could no longer bear to face. The house itself seemed to echo those memories. The laughter of children playing in the backyard, the warmth of holiday gatherings, even the petty arguments over what color to paint the living room walls, all of it clung to the furniture, 
the walls, the air. Yet now, those moments felt like a distant dream, something belonging to another lifetime. Nick knew he had to talk to the kids. That would be the hardest part. He spent the morning pacing, rehearsing what he would say, how he would explain the unexplainable. How could he tell Jamie and Lucas that their mother wasn't coming back, at least not in the way they knew her? How could he shatter the illusion of their family and ask them to pick up the pieces with him? When the moment came, he called Jamie and Lucas into the living room. They sat on the couch, their faces pale and apprehensive. Nick felt the weight of their stares, the unspoken questions already hanging in the air. Dad? Jamie asked softly. What's going on? Is mom okay? Nick took a deep breath, sitting down across from them. He tried to steady his voice, but the words came out uneven, tinged with sorrow. Your mom and I, we've decided to separate. Lucas's eyes widened, his small hands gripping the edge of the couch. Separate? What does that mean? He asked, his voice trembling. It means we won't be living together anymore, Nick said gently. Mom has moved out, and we're going to figure out what's best for all of us moving forward. <laughs> the words hit like a tidal wave. Jamie's tears came first, silent but relentless, streaming down her cheeks as she stared at the floor. Lucas, too young to fully grasp the situation, shook his head vehemently. Why? Why can't we stay together? Nick reached for his son, pulling him into a hug. I know this is hard, he said, his voice cracking. It's hard for all of us. But sometimes... Sometimes, things don't work the way we want them to. It doesn't mean your mom or I love you any less. We'll always be here for you. Jamie looked up then, her face a mix of anger and heartbreak. Why did this happen? Was it something we did? Nick shook his head quickly, his heart breaking all over again. No, sweetheart, this isn't your fault. It's between your mom and me. You didn't do anything wrong. The conversation stretched on, punctuated by sobs, questions, and reassurances. By the end of it, Nick felt drained, as if he had been hollowed out. Yet, amid the pain, there was a glimmer of something else. Relief. The truth, as painful as it was, was out in the open. They could begin to heal, however slowly. In the days that followed, the house began to change. Jessica's absence was most noticeable in the little things. The half-empty closet, the missing perfume bottle on the bathroom counter, the bare space on the kitchen wall where her favorite calendar used to hang. Nick began packing up her belongings, each item a reminder of what they had lost and what they could no longer hold on to. The act of packing felt like a quiet ceremony, a way of acknowledging the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. Nick found himself pausing over certain objects, a framed photo of their wedding day, Jessica's favorite book with its worn spine. These weren't just items. They were fragments of a life they had built together, now dismantled piece by piece. One evening, as Nick packed the last of Jessica's things into a box, Jamie appeared in the doorway. Are we going to sell the house? She asked, her voice hesitant. Nick looked up, surprised. He hadn't told the kids yet, but Jamie's question told him she already knew. I think so, he admitted. This house, it holds a lot of memories, but I think we need a fresh start, somewhere new. What do you think? Jamie shrugged, her expression conflicted. I don't know, it feels like, like giving up? Nick walked over to her, placing a hand on her shoulder. It's not giving up, he said gently. It's about moving forward. This house was our home, but it's not the only place we can be happy. We'll make new memories, I promise. As the weeks passed, the decision to sell the house became final. Realtors came and went, strangers walking through the halls and commenting on the kitchen's layout or the size of the bedrooms. It felt invasive as if these people were dissecting a part of his soul. But Nick knew it was necessary. Letting go was never easy. 
But letting go of this pressure was frightening. Letting go was never easy, but holding on would only prolong the pain. Packing up the house became a family effort. Jamie and Lucas helped sort through boxes, their laughter occasionally breaking through the somber mood as they unearthed old toys or forgotten trinkets. It wasn't all sadness. There were moments of light, of connection, as they reminisced about happier times. One afternoon, Nick found himself in the attic, sorting through a box of old photo albums. He flipped through the pages, the images telling the story of their family. Madison's first steps, Jamie's birthday parties, Lucas grinning toothlessly at the camera. Each photo was a snapshot of joy, a reminder that not everything had been broken. Nick lingered on one photo, a candid shot of him and Jessica, taken during a family picnic years ago. They were laughing, their hands intertwined, their faces alight with a happiness that now felt foreign. For a moment, Nick allowed himself to feel the weight of it, the loss of what they once had. But then he set the photo aside, a quiet acceptance settling over him. The past was just that, past. What mattered now was the future. The day they left the house was bittersweet. Nick stood in the empty living room, the walls bare, the echoes of their life together fading with each step. Jamie and Lucas were already outside, waiting by the car, their faces a mix of sadness and curiosity about what lay ahead. As Nick locked the door for the final time, he felt a strange sense of peace. The house had been their home, but it was just a place. What they carried with them, love, resilience, and the hope of a new beginning, was far more important. In the months that followed, Nick focused on rebuilding. He poured his energy into his work, his friendships, and most importantly, his children. Jamie began to smile again, her anger softening into understanding. Lucas though still adjusting, found comfort in the routines Nick established in their new home. Nick also found himself thinking about Rachel, the connection they had formed during their shared ordeal. Their friendship grew slowly, cautiously, rooted in mutual respect and understanding. There were no promises, no rush to define what they had, but there was a quiet companionship that brought Nick a sense of hope he hadn't felt in a long time. Life didn't return to what it had been. It never could, but it found a new rhythm, one marked by growth and possibility. The pain of the past lingered, but it no longer defined them. Instead, it became a part of their story, a chapter that had shaped them but didn't dictate their future. As Nick stood on the porch of their new home, watching Jamie and Lucas play in the yard, he felt something he hadn't in months, a quiet, steady sense of peace they were moving forward, one step at a time. And that, Nick realized, was enough. The first spring in their new home was unlike any Nick had experienced. It wasn't just the season, though the fresh blooms and soft breezes carried their own quiet promise, but the sense of renewal that seemed to radiate from within. Pain had not disappeared nor had the memories of betrayal and loss. They lingered like faint scars, reminders of battles fought and survived. But alongside them grew something new. Hope, fragile but insistent, like the first shoots of green breaking through thawed earth. Nick had taken up gardening, a quiet hobby he never imagined himself enjoying. He spent hours in the yard, turning soil, planting seeds, and coaxing life from the ground. It was meditative, a way to connect with something simple and pure. The act of planting felt symbolic, each seed a representation of his determination to rebuild. As the days passed and the first shoots emerged, Nick saw in them a reflection of his own journey, growth born from upheaval, beauty born from resilience. Jamie often joined him in the evenings, her once guarded demeanor softening as they worked side by side. Dad, she said one evening, brushing dirt from her hands, 
do you think things will ever feel normal again? Nick paused, looking at the rows of budding plants before them. Normal changes, sweetheart, he said after a moment. But that doesn't mean it can't still be good. Sometimes, the new normal is even better than what came before. Jamie nodded thoughtfully, her gaze distant. I think I get that, she said quietly. Lucas, too, found ways to adjust, though he still struggled to fully understand why his family had changed. The move to the new house seemed to give him room to grow. Nick made a point to spend more time with him, from playing catch in the yard to building a treehouse in the tall oak near the fence. Each plank they nailed, each brushstroke of paint, felt like a small victory, a testament to the bond they were rebuilding. One day, as they worked on the roof of the treehouse, Lucas turned to Nick with wide, earnest eyes. Do you miss Mom? he asked, his voice so soft it was almost lost in the rustling leaves. Nick set down his hammer, the question hitting him harder than he expected. I do, he admitted. Not the way things ended, but the good times we had. I think it's okay to miss those, even when we know we need to move forward. Lucas seemed to consider this, his small hands gripping the edge of the wooden frame. I miss her too, he said. But I like it here. It feels... safe. Nick reached out, ruffling his son's hair. That's all I want for you, he said. For you and Jamie to feel safe and happy. As time passed, Nick and Rachel's paths continued to cross. What had started as a shared pain gradually transformed into something quieter, steadier. A friendship built on understanding and trust. They often met for coffee or exchanged texts about their kids, but there was an unspoken depth to their connection, a warmth that neither rushed to define. One evening, as they walked along the edge of a nearby lake, Rachel paused, her gaze on the shimmering water. Do you ever feel like we're starting from scratch? She asked, her voice thoughtful. Nick nodded. All the time, he admitted, but I think that's the point. We get to decide what comes next. Rachel smiled, her eyes meeting his. It's scary, though, letting go of the past, building something new. Itis, Nick agreed, but it's also freeing. The conversation lingered in his mind long after they parted ways, her words echoing alongside his own. For the first time in years, he allowed himself to imagine a future not defined by what he had lost, but by what he could build. The final step in letting go came when Nick donated the last of Jessica's belongings. Though he had packed them away months earlier, he hadn't been able to part with them until now. As he carried the boxes into the donation center, he felt a strange mixture of grief and relief like closing a book he had loved but could no longer bear to read. Back at home, the empty space in the closet no longer felt like a void. Instead, it was a blank slate, waiting to be filled with something new. Nick stood there for a moment, taking it in, before closing the door. It wasn't about forgetting, he would always carry the lessons of his past, but about making room for the future. By the time summer arrived, the garden Nick had planted was in full bloom. Vibrant flowers framed the yard, their colors spilling over like a celebration of life's resilience. The treehouse stood tall, a symbol of the family's renewed foundation. The house itself, once a foreign space, now felt like home, a place where laughter echoed freely and memories were made without the shadow of what had been. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Nick sat on the porch with Jamie and Lucas. They watched fireflies dance in the twilight, their glow like tiny promises of magic in the everyday. Jamie leaned her head against Nick's shoulder, her voice soft. I think I'm starting to like it here, she said. Nick smiled, his heart swelling with quiet gratitude. Me too, he said. Me too. Nick's journey wasn't without its challenges. There were still moments when the weight of the past pressed on him, when the scars of betrayal ached like an old wound. But those moments grew fewer and farther between, replaced by the steady rhythm of a life rebuilt. He had learned to carry his pain without letting it define him, 
to find strength in the act of moving forward. As he stood in the garden one morning, the sun casting a warm glow over the blossoms, Nick felt a sense of peace he hadn't thought possible. The seeds he had planted months ago had grown into something beautiful, just as his family had begun to blossom in their own way. Life had not returned to what it was before, but Nick no longer wanted it to. What they had now, this messy, imperfect, hopeful life, was its own kind of happiness. The past was a chapter he had closed, and the future stretched before him like an open field, waiting to be explored. Nick knelt in the soil, tending to the garden, as the world around him buzzed with life. For the first time in a long time, he felt whole, and in that moment, he knew that while the journey hadn't been easy, it had led him exactly where he needed to be. The story emphasizes that forgiveness, patience, and faith in the future can help people overcome pain, heal wounds, and find happiness in new beginnings. We sincerely thank you for listening to today's story. Please continue to support and stay with our podcast for the long term.